Hey, it's Sol, with what should be a pretty quick guide to the Azerothian Archives. It's a fun little activity being added in patch 10.2.5. I'm going to try and cut to the chase, so if you don't mind, like the video for the effort at brevity, and subscribe for more WoW coverage. Keep in mind that this is coverage based on the PTR, so whatever I talk about here is, well, it's probably going to change. To start this event up, you'll find a banner inside the Roasted Ram over inside Baldraken. It's going to start a quest and direct you over to the outdoor version of the Algathar Academy in northeast Thaldrazis. Here you'll be introduced to what the Azerothian Archives is, what they do, and how to use some of the special tools that you'll be utilizing while doing the actual public event. It doesn't appear that you need to complete this quest on alts, or even at all, because on the PTR the quests were broken, and I just went right to the public event without any trouble. But you'll come here often to buy cosmetics, and there are a lot of cosmetics, there's more on that later. The event itself takes place in the Azure Span in one space. It's a spot called Trader's Rest. There you'll find a weekly quest that has two versions, and I'll explain how that works. The first time you do this quest on your account each week, you'll get some reputation and 5,000 of these fragments. That's the currency used to buy stuff from the vendor. You only get this big reward once a week on the entire account. Other characters can pick up this quest, but they'll only get some reputation and Dragon Isle supplies. I should also point out that you can trade these fragments across your account at a 1 to 1 ratio. You just use the vendor to buy a box, you trade a box to an alt, and then there you go. This process ought to feel very familiar and just as obnoxious. The actual public event is very reminiscent of Time Rifts from Patch 10.15, but with some very big differences. The event lasts for about 10 minutes with only a 5 minute break in between. It sends me the message that this event can be pretty much hard farmed from the very start. There's very little combat. The tasks are very simple. They're, okay, they're almost too simple. As in, you just talk to someone and return to the main area, you go click a few things, you know, that sort of stuff. Optionally, you can also just dig at these holes here. If there are people around, digging together means everyone digs a little bit faster. I can't quite tell which is the optimal way to farm up fragments quickly because, well, I was just testing this alone. It could be that it's faster to dig if there are a lot of people around. Then again, the little tasks are comparatively quite rewarding. Maybe fewer tasks are given out if there are a lot of people present, so maybe you're digging while you're waiting. We'll just have to see when this goes live. So why are you doing this? Completing tasks does two things. You get a small amount of fragments that are used to buy these cosmetics, and you also collect pages. You can see a bar at the top of the screen. Pages will fill up the bar, and filling it will get you a loot box. From testing, the quality of this loot box is random. I've been seeing some green and blue boxes so far. Opening a box will score you some reputation and fragments and some junk to sell. At the end of the 10 minute event, a boss will spawn, and unlike Time Rifts, this one is very killable, even on your own. Now let's talk about farming this event, and this is all based on just some limited testing. So far I've yet to see any significant items just drop on their own, maybe it's just my bad luck, but I'm going to assume for now that one would have to farm up the currency for everything from the vendor, and if you want everything, <laughs> you're looking at about 240,000 of these fragments to farm. Every dig you complete gets you, I'd say, like a few hundred some fragments, and then there's the weekly quest that gives 5,000 fragments, but you can only complete it once on the account per week. So as is, this could take a good while to complete. There's no advantage to using multiple alts, although we haven't seen everything yet. Notably, I don't know what reputation is going to be used for. The cosmetics from the vendor don't happen to have a rep requirement. It could be that maybe each time we go up a rep level, maybe we'll get a nice little bonus to fragments, or maybe we'll get a multiplier to how many fragments we earn going forward. That'd be a relief for people who want to like collect all of these items before Dragonflight's over. On the other hand, it's easy enough to just park one character here and then have them be the designated fragment farmer while your other characters can go off and do other things. That's all we know for now, no doubt we'll learn more in a few weeks when this event goes live, but it's a pretty simple and chill event. There's no pressure, seeing as how there's no player power, it's easy to jump into and has some pretty compelling cosmetics. It's immediately evergreen, so you can treat this event however you like, and it's going to feel the same when it's live and, I guess, 10 years from now. That's going to be it for me, don't forget to like this video if it was helpful, subscribe for more coverage, catch me live on Twitch, and I'll catch you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Thank you.